then you can start, yes, please, yeah, it's good. Okay, <laughs> thanks for, for the introduction. Um, uh, my name is uh, Wengen Ouyang. Uh, I'm a former postdoc uh, in the group of uh, Michael Wubak, and now uh, I came back to China, and uh, uh, now I'm a PI in uh, Wuhan University. Uh, I'm honored to give a talk here today to share our recent result for this <coughs> microscope mechanism of frictional aging. Uh, this is the uh, outline of my talk today. Uh, uh, let me first introduce uh, a brief background of frictional aging. So usually, uh, what, 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 do, what do we mean frictional aging? Usually it's defined in a, a kind of slide called slide experiment. So uh, imagine we have two substances in contact and we slide the two substances into state state and then we hold some time and slide again. Up the, the whole time. And uh, the experiment shows that uh, the static friction increases logarithmically with the whole time. And this uh, is called aging effect. And, and this effect exists at different length scales, from geo, geophysical length scale to nano uh, length scale uh, for this uh, silica uh, surface. And uh, another feature of frictional aging is that there are uh, uh, transient dynamics of this uh, uh, friction force traces in doing this uh, hold, uh, slide hold slide experiment. And uh, to describe, describe the such dynamic effect, people uh, propose this code, uh, we call the red state uh, models. And it is empirical models because it, the, there's, um, they introduce a state variable, which we, we don't know the physical meaning up to now. Um, but it works. It, it can describe uh, uh, the experimental observation very well. Uh, there are two main uh, reasons that uh, people uh, uh, assume that uh, can be the reason for the frictional aging. The first one is that the uh, creep effect, basically, uh, when doing contact, the contact area can increase with cold time. And uh, the other reason is that uh, the formation of the interfacial chemical bonds. Uh, in 2011, uh, this is uh, a very ex excellent uh, experimental work by uh, Professor Rob Kapik and Professor Chen Yang Li. And they, in their nice experiment, they exclude the first reason. And uh, they found that the second reason, basically, is the formation of the interfacial chemical bonds, is the main origin of the frictional aging for silica contacts, which is also for the rock, uh, rock surfaces. And uh, uh, almost at the same time, uh, 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 Professor Andrew Schermazen and Professor Michael Wack, uh, they proposed a multi-contact model to describe such effects. Basically, uh, they, they, uh, using this model, based, uh, they performed uh, kinetic simulations. They found that uh, the chemical bond uh, can induce uh, friction with a non monotonic temperature and velocity dependence, which agrees well with uh, experimental observations. Recently, uh, there are uh, more uh, experimental uh, results for uh, this curricular aging. The first mass nice work is uh, uh, performed in the group of Rob Kapik, and they, the system is oxidized silicon tips on silicon wafers. And uh, they extend, for the first time, they extend to uh, the whole time to very short time scales, to milliseconds. And they observe a uh, transition from linear aging to logarithmic aging. And with the help of kinetic Monte Carlo simulations, they found that to explain the linear aging behavior, it's essential to, to introduce a distribution of the bond formation energy barrier. Basically, uh, it means that there are multi types of bonds at the instead of a single type of uh, bonds. And for a very similar system, they also measured the normal load dependence of frictional aging. And they found that at the different whole times, the, uh, friction, the friction drop increases almost linearly with the load. And they uh, collaborated with uh, Isabella. They uh, did this uh, kinetic mode color simulations. Uh, they can explain the chemical origin of the uh, frictional aging. Basically, when there are distributions of the formation energy barrier, uh, the aging uh, effect will will happen, will appear. And uh, with different distributions of the uh, energy barrier, the behavior will, will be uh, different. 
And uh, for this uh, uh, realistic MD uh, energy barrier and the uniform energy barrier, they both they found that the friction force uh, increased almost nearly with the load when the load is low enough, which is consistent with uh, experimental observations. And this, uh, one more about this chemistry simulation. This is a very powerful tool, and they can introduce the distribution of the uh, formation energy and also introduce the effect of normal load and uh, even the effect of the interaction between uh, the chemical bonds. Another nice work is uh, performed in a uh, group of Andrew Schmeisen and uh, in collaboration with uh, Ruben Harris. Uh, they observed that uh, also for silica silicon uh, contacts, they observed that the uh, uh, frictional aging is very sensitive to the temperature and the aging effect actually uh, decreases with the increasing temperature. And uh, actually, they also observe two regions, a uh, logarithmic region and uh, uh, might be a plateau or linear region at some more whole time. And they also performed uh, nice MD simulations to explain the observations of, uh, of the experimental uh, measurements very well. Um, now, uh, for theoretical aspect, we have uh, chemistry simulations and also MD simulations. Um, they, are, they have given a nice agreement with the experiment, but uh, they don't have analytical expressions and usually they are very time consuming. So our goal is to develop a theoretical framework for, uh, for uh, the chemical bond induced friction and the frictional aging. And we try to give, give some analytical results. This is our uh, model. Basically, we have two surfaces, and here they have many types of bonds. And the elasticity of the bond is represented by the sprint here. And uh, we introduce two rays, k on for formation, for bond formation, and k off for bond rupture. And both of them are uh, thermally activated. And we also introduce the, the normal load dependence to the formation energy, and the normal load distribution is basically used. We adopt EMP zero. And here we also we can also introduce the uniform distribution as that in uh, chemistry simulations. To get analytical result, uh, we found uh, we found that only these two typical uniform di distribution. Then, uh, with this assumption, we can calculate our friction force of the system as, as using this equation. P by B is the probability density at the bound with the elevation x at time t. Uh, then we can derive uh, such uh, gap, uh, time evolution of, of phi B with the following equation. And here, P B is the probability that the bound uh, is intact at time t. We then we apply this approach to calculate the force evolution in the slide called slide experiment. Uh, firstly, we calculate uh, we will apply this approach to calculate the friction at the steady state for both constant load and for first like load distribution. In both cases, we can get analytical results, and uh, uh, with this analytical result, we can uh, fit the various experimental result. For, uh, Panel A is experimental result from a uh, group uh, Nicholas Spencer, and the panel B is from uh, Rob Kapi, and the panel C and D is from Andrew Schermeiser. Uh, so here, uh, we pro uh, our analytical solution of the theoretical model allows us to interpret the experimental data on time scales and length scales that are relevant to experimental conditions. And then we go for uh, uh, study the, the frictional aging. Here, the figure shows a typical process, sliding, cold sliding uh, process. And uh, here, the force peaks is, are given by the rupture force, which is determined by the number of connected bonds after the whole time. And the delta F is the friction drop that measured in the experiments. And this can be uh, expressed uh, by this equation. We can see that. Uh, the time dependence of the force is solely come from the number of bonded contacts. So we following will mainly focus on analysis of this quantity. And uh, since uh, during the whole time, the sliding velocity is zero. So the general formula can be reduced to this simple equation. And we can get a simple solution for this. Apparently, there's no aging effect. It means that for single type of bonds, there's no aging. So then we can include distribution uh, for the activation energy barrier. Um, here, it should be noted that, uh, in principle, we should also include the distribution for the 
uh, Raptor and Barrier data EO. But according to game simulation for city context, the net the distribution for data EO is much narrower than that for data young. So here we treat it as a constant. Here we consider two typical uh, distribution, uniform and gamma distribution. Uh, we can get analytical result. You see here it's still very complicated because it contains a series of uh, special functions. So uh, we did a, a symptotic uh, analysis to simplify it. Uh, at short time scales, we got a very between the number of contacts and the uh, code time. It's, uh, you see, the number of contacts and B is, uh, grows linearly with the time, and also proportional to the maximum rate of the contact formation and the Laplace transform of the, of the distribution. And here, the value of time is also determined by the maximum rate of the contact formation. While for longer times, it's uh, divided into two regions. Um, uh, the, for Intermediate uh, time scale is uh, scales like logarithmic or logarithmic like uh, uh, aging behavior. And for even longer time, then it becomes saturated, it becomes a constant for both uniform and gamma distributions. Then we can also include the normal load distribution to choose the energy activation barrier. Uh, even and also a combination of this load distribution and the uniform and gamma distribution. Uh, uh, for the general case, we don't have an analytical expression for uh, uh, at a very short and long time scales. We can go to very simple uh, symptotic behavior of the number of contacts as function of the normal load. As you can see here, when the normal load is uh, very low, actually, F total is uh, this is a, this is our normal load and this is a division force. When the normal load is much smaller than the division force, then the at low load regime, the number of contacts will scale linearly with normal load, which is consistent with the experimental data. So here is a more detailed comparison with the experiments. You see here, we can see panel A. The black circles is extracted from the paper by Rob Kapik, and the red line is the exact formula we fit it. And then uh, the, you see the green, blue, and the black dash lines are the a symptotic formula at the corresponding aging regions. Uh, for both uniform and gamma distribution, we do a very good uh, fitting. Uh, here we have five fitting parameters, and uh, uh, each uh, parameters we are using a, a fit. Uh, basically, we use a physical uh, the re the re regions of the. Uh, parameters is in the is in the physical region is consistent with the MNC simulations, um, and to avoid, to avoid overfitting, we did this. We applied the same model to a, a, a very similar system did, uh, given by the same group, and uh, here the measure is the normal load dependence of fractional aging, and uh, you see here for both uh, pure normal load and uh, combination of uh, normal lo uh, normal load and uniform or gamma distribution, they give uh, uh, a fairly good uh, agreement, and especially here we can see that the friction force is uh, increased nearly with normal load at the lower load region. So uh, here we also calculate the temperature dependence of aging uh, as uh, for uniform distribution load uh, distribution. As we can see here, as the temperature increases, the uh, aging accelerates. Basically, it happens earlier. You see here. And uh, the basically shifting the logarithmic time dependence to short time scales. And at the same time, the aging slope, the logarithmic aging, decreases with increasing temperature. This is consistent with the experimental observation by um, Andrew Schemeisen. And here we also observe, if we calculate the frequent force as a function for temperature, we observe a non-monotonic behavior <coughs> because these are two competing uh, processes. Uh, for both bond formation and bond rupture. And here we also calculate, uh, try to give a relation between average kinetic friction and the frictional aging. As we all know that in a typical uh, FM uh, experiment, the, when a stick keeps sliding on surface, usually they have uh, stick slip events. And actually, if there are um, chemical bonds, actually, uh, the sliding velocity of T is zero. Mm, 
edge map happen as, as expected by the game simulation. So here we provide an analytic, analytical relation between this aging induced average kinetic friction. And the conclusion is that we found that the average friction decreases with increasing sliding velocity. And this is easy to understand because when we increase in the sliding velocity, the average stick time is reduced. Uh, so basically, this is our main conclusions. Uh, we developed an analytical model for description of frictional aging that mediated by dynamic formation and the rupture of microscopic interfacial contacts. And the model predicts three different uh, aging regions, linear, logarithmic, and uh, leveling of saturation. And the, this is consistent with the experimental uh, observations. And uh, at the same time, the predicted uh, dependencies of frictional aging and the normal load, uh, and also on temperature, are in good agreement with experimental observations and uh, the results of KMC simulations. Uh, we think our work of uh, promising opportunities for understanding the microscope mechanisms of frictional aging. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for talk. And uh, yeah, if there are questions, please. Uh, your hand or uh, if it's on Zoom. Questions, yes, Rob. <clears throat> thank you and thank you for uh, the uh, attention to, to our work and other uh, groups that have been working on this. Uh, and I, I wanted to ask, how, could you just say a little more about how you handled looking at the load dependence? Uh, so increasing load will increase the contact area so you can get more bonds forming, uh, just more sites in contact, but also it increases the pressure and that pressure can maybe uh, 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 accelerate bond formation, but it could also inhibit bond breaking. And I believe you've got both going on. So how did you handle the, the, the physics of the effective load? Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks for the uh, uh, question. Uh, here, yeah, you, you are right. Uh, when uh, when we increase in the normal load, actually, here uh, you see this is the way how we. Uh, yeah, this is the way how we include in the normal load effect. Uh, here, actually, when we increase in the uh, pressure, uh, the formation energy will be reduced, so it's more easier for the bond to uh, bond formation. And uh, actually, uh, here, uh, uh, so here I didn't show. Uh, actually, here we also uh, con we consider consider this uh, effect when we uh, basically the effect of normal load are also on the rupture uh, energy barrier. Uh, uh, it it had uh, it will um, influence the quantity of the of the friction force, but the general behavior is uh, keeps here. This we check, yeah. You, so you did not, so, so there you have bond breaking is accelerated by stress, but you, you, did, you do not have bond, f sorry, bond forming is accelerated by stress, but you did not put bond breaking being inhibited by stress. Is that right? Uh, here, yeah, here we didn't, but uh, we checked. Uh, actually, in, in, our, uh, in, our, in our work in the supplementary, we, we checked this. We, we also include in this effect on the bond formation, and uh, uh, basically, maybe you can show. Let me see. I have some result. Wait for a moment. So I didn't put in the. I'll comment. It's an interesting question because you know pressure will increase. You know, it should make yeah. bond formation easier. It makes bond breaking harder, but it also yes. will increase friction. And with more friction as you slide, that should help bond breaking. So it's, it, there's a sort of, two, there, compression is preventing yes, bond yes. breaking, yeah, yeah. I, I think increasing bond breaking. Yeah, actually, we check this. I will share this. an interesting uh, question. So here, we also include the effect of uh, uh, normal, uh, normal load on the rupture force. You see here, for when, uh, for uh, here, basically for, VB is basically for for the for for yield. Uh, 
see right here. Yes. Basically, when when it's equal to zero, basically is the case what I showed just showed in the presentation. When it's uh, when it's positive, it's, it's just uh, 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 it will, will basically when it's positive, it will reduce the energy barrier for rupture. When it's negative, then it will increase the energy uh, for rupture. Then you see here, this is the trend, the change. Yeah. So the general behavior is uh, it's similar, but yeah, as you're saying, if if we assume that the pressure will increase the rupture energy barrier, then uh, the friction force will increase. It's the, the, the curve will globally shift up. <laughs> uh, can you uh, open the chat and look for the question? Okay. Yeah, there is it. Ah, oh, okay. 